Uh, this was at the same time a certain um, opportunity uh, to develop something, uh, under, but under very difficult situation uh, conditions. So then, uh, without to let's say to to um, limit or to prohibit, uh, let's say company, private companies, or uh, private property or so production means. Uh, a new approach was started. Actually, uh, we had no big companies in Rojava. Uh, there were no big private companies. They all have had left in the uh, meanwhile, and the Syrian state never uh, allowed an, any kind of, let's say, bigger in, uh, industrial structure uh, in Rojava. So, uh, in 2014, when I was the first time, or when I was in Rojava, uh, we could see many cooperatives, um, dozens of cooperatives we could see, and it, especially in the area of production, but not only, uh, also on the uh, area of uh, selling products. Um, but now, when I read and speak to people who come from there and follow all these informations, uh, the number has come three, four times, I don't know. There are not hundreds, probably thousands of cooperatives, a lot of initiatives. And the society, uh, the political society, they support these cooperatives. They do not uh, say, okay, if people want to do private uh, uh, business, they can. It's not forbidden. Uh, we have no special limits for them, but we do not support them. We support uh, the cooperatives. And uh, Jaren spoke about the communes, the 4,000 communes in Rojava and the upper structures, the People's Council on the neighborhood levels, district levels and uh, the Rojava or let's say the canton levels. And they there uh, have discussions, quite a lot of discussions how to develop it. Uh, I have some pictures which I want to show you. Uh, na, na. So for example, I have not many pictures, but this is a textile pro a cooperative in Rojava. Uh, this is a bakery uh, from women. It's a cooperative. They sell and they have, sorry, yes, I have not much, but uh, all the cooperatives we could visit, they worked quite well. They said, okay, we have not the problem that the people come to us. It's more, the issue is more about um, how to organize them, how to put them in contact with the others. Uh, today I just read that there is a co new cooperative of uh, selling all these products and uh, which uh, uh, of Rojava and they have meanwhile let's say 10,000 members in Rojava. It's a, it's a let's say um, um, an upper structure of many cooperatives so there are quite very interesting developments in uh, Rojava. Um, but, and, but when we speak about the uh, economy uh, that, which is developing there, the most crucial issue is that the uh, political structures, the direct democratic structures, the communes and the people's council, they are the initiators of these uh, cooperatives. Of course, private, every p person can do it. And these co uh, cooperatives they are mostly connected. So there is a, a democratic control by the people. They are not only owns uh, completely uh, own uh, independent structures. They are very, very directly connected. So one second, I am coming to. So me, with the years, uh, meanwhile, almost four years. Uh, after uh, the revolution in Rojava, which is in a very dyna dynamic uh, process, we have this, uh, I ha we have pre I prepared with some friends this uh, diagram. I will not uh, explain it, all of this, but uh, to describe what happened. On the left side, these are the four levels, uh, and the bases are the communes, and uh, it's a mix of, let's say, council democracy and also basis democracy. And uh, they have commissions, they have decided to have eight uh, dimensions. They said, said, okay, all the life and uh, the issues in the life you must categorize in a certain way. They said we have eight basic uh, commissions, areas, and these are 
the areas from this political approach of democratic confederalism declared in 2005, and they exist also in Bakur, in North Kurdistan. North Kurdistan, the umbrella structure for uh, our political movement is a democratic society congress. It's uh, not the same, uh, the conditions are different, but uh, there's a lot of similarities. The basic approaches are, uh, are the same. And uh, actually, when the Rojava revolution started in 2011-12, they benefited uh, from, the, uh, from the experience in Bakur, in North Kurdistan. And because it started there in 2007, and in 2007 the first neighborhood council started uh, in areas where the movement was strong. But now, then, in let's say two years ago, one, two, two years ago, a new discussion started in North Kurdistan, how to develop or deepen the democracy, the, the, all these structures. And, and then, two years ago, we from the north, we started to benefit from Rojava. So it's in a very uh, direct interaction, and people go and come. Uh, I say this because to understand Rojava, we must understand uh, all this all this uh, broader uh, Kurdish uh, freedom movement. Uh, on the right side, you see the democratic self-administration. Uh, this is, uh, has been established two years ago. It's an, a new, additional, uh, complementary, additional, not really parallel structure, which includes more parts of the society, because not everybody was involved in these uh, communes and people's councils. Uh, the society is uh, very different, as it's usually. And there are not only Kurds, uh, the others. They are uh, even among some other political parties, uh, Kurdish parties. And not everybody joined. The majority, yes, but not there. Still, there was in some regions still a big minority. And uh, because of because of that and other reasons. Uh, there was a uh, discussion started at the end of 2013 and uh, this democratic self-administration has been established. It has a le legislative council, uh, executive council. Uh, but this the structure uh, this, uh, of the council structure, which, is, which we can describe, there are two names which are used. The one is the uh, People's Council of West Kurdistan, MGRK. And this is the upper and that's a structure, and where all those delegates come together on the highest level. And uh, the movement is what also called Tevdem. Uh, if you uh, start to read about Rojava, you will hear, hear also the name of Tevdem. Actually, Tevdem, MGRK, it's the same. Let's say this. However, this is, uh, these structures, they're integrated more and more in uh, though the interactions with the democratic self uh, administrations are very strong. Actually, the main actor of the democratic self administration are the council, uh, the TAVDEM, MGRK. They are the main initiator. That's nothing which comes from outside. And I say this because it's a dynamic process. Um, the, the aim is to include as much as people, but at same at same time, to develop these uh, radical democratic structures. So it's a challenge, of course. When this democratic self-administration has been declared in January 2014, mm -hmm. we had in Rojava, I guess, 1,500 communes. Now we have 4,000. Mm -hmm. And the communes are on the lo lowest level and where communes are uh, to, to bring people into the political processes and the decisions and it empowers people. This is uh, something very important. Um, I was invited to, uh, to participate in an academic delegation in visiting Rajava in um, uh, December of 2014. And of course, my, one of my most, most compelling interests was to see how this played out, because you know, if this was going to be, if, if these were going to be um, a face-to-face -face assembly was the was the, the 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 paradigmatic institution for a new post-Marxist revolution. This is the place it was being worked out, and how did that happen? And I actually did um, visit. I was we were taken. I saw an assembly. I saw an assembly in Kamishlo 
And it was, you know, all of the, the historical extraneities were gone because it wasn't just Kurds alone. It was Kurds and Arabs. It wasn't men alone. There were women. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't particularly religious. I didn't see a single guillotine. Here it was. Here it was. This, this beautiful institution of people making decisions at, the, at their local level. And it was confederal in nature, which is an old anarchist concept of, um, that Bookchin had also written about. Um, at, the, at the basic street level, the level of the residential street was the commune. And, the, um, so, and there would be several of those you know, in, a, in a given neighborhood. So the communes would send delegates, mandated recallable delegates, that's another anarchist principle, to a neighborhood council. The neighborhood council in turn would send mandated recallable delegates to the district level, which the district refers to a city and its surroundings. And at the district level, they would send mandated recallable delegates to a larger, um, the, the, can, the, 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 the council for the canton, which is, that was the name of the three, the three enclaves in, in, that were participated in this in northern city, at Jazeera, Kobani, and Afrin cantons. So, um, so I was delighted to see, to see that. Um, when I re went, went back again in December, uh, when was it? No, October of 2015, um, a, uh, almost a year later, um, was able to ask some, quest ask, ask some questions of, the, um, of um, someone in the Legislative Council about it. He said that there were 4,000 communes in, I thought, oh, was it Chizira or in Rajiv as a whole? I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember, but there were 4,000. Um, and the participation was good. Um, we asked detailed questions like, what happens if there's a disagreement? What if, who resolves the issue? And it, we said something very interesting, that, that, that one of the, they, they have a, one of the standards by which disagreements are resolved and decisions are made is the social contract of Rojava. It's like a, well, it would be like a constitution if there were a state, but this is an anti-state place. There's, they, they have a deep, deep hatred of states based on, based on 20th century history in the Middle East. So this is a stateless society, and they have, instead of a constitution, which they associate with the state, they have a social contract, which is suitable for their system, that, can, that guarantees you know, gender equality, human rights of, of every, every kind you can imagine, no ethnic or religious discrimination. Um, it sets up the, the, the human rights, it, it, it concretizes the human rights ideals of the society so that when there's a conflict, um, a decision has to be made, that's one, one of the ways it's resolved is to look at that social contract, which I thought was very interesting. It's a point of reference for the whole society. Okay, any other questions? Um, we look over here first, Colin. Uh, to, uh, just a few words on the Rojava economy right now. To what extent, uh, with all the cooperatives, uh, to what extent uh, is it a competitive market economy versus a cooperative uh, democratically planned economy? And uh, specifically, uh, what's the relation of the communal assemblies to the organization of the economy? <laughs> when I was there, in, when I was there in, uh, uh, my first trip there, I was told that the cooperatives are accountable to the um, to the the council system. Um, that they have uh, they have to meet with them periodically, and so that the the cooperatives are actually embedded in this this multi-tiered council system and, and and responsible to it. And also the economic committees that are on that chart there. Um, are, are much involved in supervising the cooperatives. This is my understanding. So, uh, to ask, uh, every commune or council on a high level has an economic committee, economic committee, and they are the bodies which initiated this uh, co uh, commute, as she said. And we have cooperatives on the commune level and the higher level, and uh, Actually, one, uh, two to three years ago, each commune, uh, if not each commune, several communes together, they started to discuss what we can do. And meanwhile, actually, in every neighborhood at least, uh, but often several in one neighborhood, uh, there are initiatives for to establish cooperatives. So people look 
powers the life organize, what is produced here, how we can bring people together who are doing some different stuff. And uh, this was the, the, the discussion. Uh, how to organize our um, agriculture. This is uh, not an easy issue because the land belongs to people, but some land, land belonged to the state, the real state. They took first this state and this land and, and gave it to the poorest people. And they were mostly having organized in cooperatives. As, and then second step, they encouraged people, uh, farmers, to come uh, together in a cooperatives on a village basis. So this is a very dynamic process now. And I spoke about these uh, big cooperatives which sell these products. It's not only selling, they're also, through selling, uh, they have an influence on the price. You know, there's a war and there are people who are trading, they're smuggling from a different region, different goods. And some of the goods, they do not, uh, you don't have them or they have, you have them very limitedly. It's an influence on the prices. Uh, it's a, um, it affects the life standard of the people very directly. And uh, they, have established, they have also something, from the beginning of the revolution, there was a certain price control. They took over the uh, several bigger, let's say, let's, uh, companies, state companies. Uh, at the beginning, there were several public companies, and they were uh, public companies that were responsible to the, um, the let's say the construction on the can canton level or a district level depends on the public company and now, now there's a fort to transform this public company step by step to cooperatives and uh, there's this effort and they do it slow not too too fast and yes this is a process which we have and there are some areas or production areas where the private companies are still dominant and it's a process of to let's say the to make the cooperatives bigger and uh, the confrontation that's not a real direct confrontation let's say with uh, some higher classes they do not actually exist in the area of companies but there are some big landowners so uh, the approach is not to 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 search to look for the direct uh, confrontations with them because this can create other social problems not problems uh, contradictions and other parties can use misuse abuses but it's also not necessary at this time and the agriculture land is so big it's huge uh, they have too, actually too much agricultural land and they have overproduction, but of some goods, of some products. So they are in process of diversifying the agriculture, as I mean the, uh, the type of products. They are in this process and they had a, already have already some success. They are always more capable to feed uh, the population more better and better and have a food sovereignty.